So there's going to be a different yeah. type of Port Adelaide this week because of what you've seen now and what you pointed out at the weekend that something needs to change? Oh, no, I think we've got, as I said, we've got really clear and accurate information against the better teams, what they've been able to do to us. We also sit on the ladder, what are we, six and three? We, you know, be plenty of teams would be happy to be in that position, but we've, we're trying to improve and we're trying to become, you know, not just a good team, but a great team. And we, we, our planning is to build the team, whether regardless of which round it is, it's to continue to build and improve the team. So, yeah, we're looking for improvement this week. So the numbers show you've fallen back from last year on clearances and the suggestion is then you've had to concede more territory and work harder to get to goal. How do you change that? Yeah, I think there's... We were talking about that this morning. We were talking about what the game's actually done and, and, and the game's a little bit lopsided and... If you have a sim simplistic view of we're losing more clearances or we're winning more clearances, it can be a little bit misleading, I think, with what's actually going on in the game. So I think you've just got to understand that games are different from week to week. The start of the season is different to what it is now at round 10. Um, I think scoring's drying up again. I think that's what it looks like. So I think the competition is changing a little bit. It's into the grind part of the season a little bit. So it's you know the game does change a little bit. And we played a team last week who were an elite clearance team and we were able to go first quarter poor, second quarter elite. So got to look for a more consistent second quarter effort and then sometimes we look for a you know almost a, a somewhat of a, a balanced approach it's not you can't lose and you can't win them all but you've got to you've got to be able to break even so you're playing a team that's renowned for playing defensive footy and they're very good at it yes past. so how are you going to approach it do you want to break it open or you just want to get into a war with them? oh you're going to have to there's going to be times where you're going to, have to be patient you're going to have to be in the war you're going to have to just keep firing and um, there's going to be other times where hopefully the ground opens up. It's the MCG. It's a nice big ground. It's going to give us some chances to have a look, as it will if we're not on our game defensively. They'll get looks at it too. So I think it's, uh, you know, it's, it's the art of playing what you get and playing what you see. And for us, um, we've been reasonably consistent at doing that. You brought in three defenders. One of them can play midfield. Yeah. Yeah, everyone pointed out what you're doing in the midfield. Was it tempting to look at other options? No, I think you're right. I mean, it's, we're not hiding anything. We, we know Dan can play midfield a lot. You know, we think we can certainly... Trent's been someone who's been queuing up to, to get in the team for quite, for quite a period of time. But, you know, we've got a good balance with our, with our defenders. We've got some good, good players in our team now who can play back. There's no doubt about that. We've got a bit more flexibility in those players. Have you made a call on who would be the sub in my trouble with the team next? Yeah, I don't know whether I want to go out and limit and tell you exactly who's going to be the sub, but uh, I will. Miles will be the sub. <laughs> so Bucks will know now that Miles will be our sub. I don't know why we wait for 40 minutes before the game. We know what's going on. So unless something changes, that's what will happen. Uh, Lockie Jones, is that an easy decision for him straight? No, not an easy decision. I mean, it's a, it's a bravish decision, I think, from us as a footy club. We know what he's... I mean, I, I did some more thinking about Lockie yesterday and I go, you know what, he's got enough sample exposure, he's got enough credits, he knows how to play at that level. What would I see differently and what would we see differently if he was to play sample if we think he's fit? We don't think we will see too much that's going to either change our minds or, or, or lessen our uh, want to play him in our AFL team. I think his, his form when he was in the team was really, really strong. He, you know, he played two games that were pretty good and we're pretty happy to have him back in the side. We think he's a, he's a part of that, that growth of us as a football club between now and the end of the year. Is it about us having an improvement that can test the area of your game, but not bringing in Lockie Jones? No, not so much. I don't think that's just his skills. His, his skill set is, it has that in it. There's absolutely no doubt he's a bit of a beast when it comes to going at it for a young fella, but um, he's got some real speed to cover the ground as well. He's really supportive and helpful when it comes to a high ball as well. So he's got a lot of the game that we like. Um, I think uh, he, he certainly brings some stuff to our back half that, we, uh, that will improve us. Did you look more at who's at the stoppages or the way you approach the stoppages rather than anything else this week about how you can improve those numbers? Oh, no, we looked at structure, we looked at um, personnel, we do that every week, but we're pretty consistent with our personnel. I think most teams are. I mean, give or take one or two changes to your personnel, more often than not, they're exposed now. They're the same people who are te tending to be in there. And, and structure-wise, I think we're, we're again, we're, we're pretty exposed to, at round 10. People know what you tend to expect. And, you know, there's, there's a few changes that you do week to week and game to game and quarter to quarter that you have to have flexibility. And we've got some good flexibility in our side to be able to do that. So that leaves that third element, desire, attitude, intent. And it's OK. It's, you know, we all agree that it's, um, it's never perfect and hasn't been... As I said, at six and three, there was three times we perhaps would have liked it to be a little bit better, but there's six times that we're, we're doing it pretty well. So, um, you know, we can either be doom and gloom or we can be quite positive about where we are. And I think I'd like to stick in the quite positive about what we've done over a good period of time. And our boys deserve, um, you know, the credit for being able to do that.
given, I guess, um, with Horatio going out, how do you see that affecting Connor's role in the team on some, yeah, tomorrow? Yeah, it won't. But look, I don't think it'll affect, it'll affect parts of the forward line collectively, but, you know, and Connor is one part of that, Robbie's one part of that, you know, Pepper Pepper's a part of that as well, you know, we've got three talls that are down there that are doing a bit of that as well, so... It, it, and Mott's is there. So, I mean, it, certainly it has some effect, but it's, you know, it's... Once the game starts, we probably, to be fair to Orazio, we won't, we won't be worried about him not being there and what he's doing. We'll be more worried about what the other six or seven or eight players are that are going through there, what we doing. Is it just, uh, yeah, how long do you think he might be out for? Oh, look, I, I think he's a week. I don't think he's any more than a week, but as soon as I say that, you'll bring it back up in a couple of weeks. So if he hasn't played and tell me we yeah. didn't tell you the facts. So I think he's a week, but we'll wait and see. How, how about, sorry... Um, Butters, it's a, another bloke, very promising. Oh, it's, yeah, it's, it's, yeah it's, it's difficult, but it's a situation that, that's, un, that's unknown and un, unforeseen probably for a fair bit of time. We'd, Lockie's had the same surgery and he's back playing and Butts, he's, you know, it's, it's, it's nerve damage and it can be, it can be a bit slow. Um, we're really optimistic and positive for, for Zach. We, we know he's a very, very important part of our, our midfield forward line mix, but, you know, we can't do much about it. Injuries happen and... The only way you can improve is uh, have an attitude to get better as quick as you can. And Zach's been really positive. Um, can't I can't ask him to do any more than he's been doing. I don't, I don't think it's a timeline yet, but is it? I mean, knee surgery is it a chance we won't see him again this year, or is it? No, I don't want to put anything definitive on the table because I know that'll be the headline, and I don't want that to be the case. I think. Zach has been, we've done some um, surgery to give him the best chance to be available as soon as we possibly can, and that, that includes this year, so it's not something we're writing off for a season. But again, we don't know how it behaves. We, we have some information around it, and we, we get some, unfortunately, we get some information around being just got to be patient, and, and it can change quite quickly, and it might not change quickly. So. Can beyond a win, what do you want to see tomorrow? Oh, just the way we play, the game that we play consistently, and we do do it pretty consistently, so it's it's... I'm not going to give you anything that's super exciting. I'm just going to see that, that Port Adelaide play a brand of football that we know stands up pretty well for us and, and gets us results more often than not. We're kind of against a team that are really desperate. You know, they couldn't be hammered much more. They've got a few things. They've got some good players back in their team with Adams, a very important part of their team, and Roughhead as well. So MCG, Melbourne, it's a travel game, all those things that come into it, they're, they're better than they are by the numbers on the ladder. We know that. We're, they're a really strong defensive team. You know, we all know, and we've all been around footy a fair while. Sometimes when you get in the positions, you get, you get galvanised by some of, the, some of the stuff that's going on around you. And I'm, I assume that Nathan will lead his team really well this week, and that's what we should expect, a pretty damn good Collingwood. What's the feedback been like from your forwards as to how they're seeing the way the game's unfolding in front of them? Oh, I think it's it's pretty consistent. They get frustrated at times and they um, they get excited at other times and they, they also know that they've got to complete some of the tasks that they've had. You know, we had opportunities early in last week's game that we just didn't capitalise on. And when you play against the very best teams in the competition, they make you pay. Um, you know, but we all play a part of the team, so it's not whatever the forwards see, what the mids see, what the backs see, it's what they do together and collectively that they worry about. Do you think the prison bars to take over to Melbourne, <laughs> Why would I do that? Oh, uh, you know, that must another statement. <laughs> Can we just say that the, 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 the reality of that is, is, is an, it's basically a non-conversation right now, isn't it? It's, it's a, and we all know, and you ask the question with some humour, and that's great, but the reality is we're talking about it for one game in South Australia in a heritage race. We're not talking, we're not disrespecting Collingwood. They are Collingwood and they have been for a long time. We are Port Adelaide. So from an administration point of view, it's clear that there's... Obviously, some tension between a couple of presidents or former presidents. You don't think that really translates to the players at all? You'd have to be foolish to think it did. I think players go out there to play and they know every week that they don't play tough and hard footy, they get in trouble and they don't take many risks like that. I don't think any team does. I, don't think, I think we oversell sometimes what, what some of the background noise can be. The reality is when the balls bounce, we have to play and we have to compete really hard and we'll do that regardless. Ladders. Grundy. Interesting matchup, isn't it? It's a great test for Pete. I mean, it's a really great test. It's an exciting test. You know, we, we've been really excited about Pete's growth as a player and we think, well, this is, this is the ultimate test, you know, up against Grundy, who's an absolute outstanding player and been in pretty good form. Um, it's just good to see where Pete's at and he'll, he'll embrace the challenge. He knows that he's got this is a great opportunity to get a great learning in, in his game and to figure out where he's at and where he needs to improve still. Did you consider bringing Sam, um, Sam as well to move from last support, or was it more just seeing how? Is it more about seeing how Pete goes? No, I think again the, the consistency of what's going on in, in front of the ball for us is that the three tools have been pretty, 
pretty good for us and we don't think we can carry an extra tall and that's why Sam you know, wouldn't come in. It's not because we don't think Sam can play AFL football, but we think Pete's slightly in front.